Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. When we look in the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, the first chapter of Genesis, the only title we find there for, for God is Elohim, which is God. Because that speaks to the, the power, the might, the, and the awesomeness of this one God of all creation. But when God made man, and in chapter 2 we see that the moment that man was made, that we were introduced to a different title of God. It's called Lord, capital L-O-R-D. So why the change? Why? Because Lord speak to a covenant-keeping God that is faithful to his promise. Now, why would that name or that title be relevant to the creation. It doesn't have anything to do with creation. But since God now is going to deal with mankind who is made in his image, he wants us to know of his faithfulness. So this new title appeared the moment that God made man. So for the whole first chapter, only God, God, God speaking about creation. When it comes to man, then a new title that shows the faithfulness of God. It means we can trust God. It speaks of the God who, if he said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will surely bring it to pass. That even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. That's all of those who are like wrapped up in that name, Lord. He's a faithful God, covenant-keeping God. So I'm going to speak today about the Lord who is God. The Lord he is God. And I want to bring that around to the person of Jesus. This, the show, by the way, is talking Jesus. So everything that I'm talking about, you know, whether you say God or, or Lord or Jesus Christ, as, uh, as a show I, I did earlier said, Jesus said, I am the Father one. It's in the context of divinity. We're not Jesus only. We don't believe that. Only God exists and the Son is just some type of prophet or angel. No, we don't believe all of those nonsense. We believe in the Trinity as revealed in Scripture. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. Genesis 1.2, we see the Holy Spirit move over the surface of the water. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is called the Spirit of God. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. That's, so one, we see God. Two, we see the Holy Spirit. Three, we see the Word. The Word became flesh and tabernacle among us, and we beheld his glory, the gl glory as of the only begotten Son. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the first three verses, but we're not going to go there. I have so many shows and that I did. Go to my YouTube page. You'll find hundreds of videos on every topic conceivable talking about Jesus so I'm going to talk briefly and the Lord who is God the foundational teaching of the Jewish faith is the Shema here O Israel that's what I started out with here O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart thy soul thy mind thy strength it is the foundational teaching of the Torah, this one Lord. But does Christianity teach that they are three? You know, because sometimes we hear people say that you believe in three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's true. That one, two, three. Of course there's three. We believe in three, but three what? Not three gods. We believe in three persons in the one Godhead. Is one God who chose to reveal himself in three persons. Now, you might not understand it and you might choose not to believe it, but that doesn't mean that's not what is revealed. We are going by what is revealed. Scripture says we don't lean on our own understanding. But in all of our ways, we acknowledge God. Acknowledging God means that we acknowledge his word, that what it said is true. So it's not a matter of that we have superior understanding than others. 
is a matter that we submit our understanding to the authority of the Holy Spirit of God and believe what is revealed. Now, it's impossible for you to tell us that what we believe is not revealed. It is revealed. That's why we believe it. Some choose not to believe what God has revealed, and that's a whole different story. Christianity holds to the biblical teaching that there is only one God. This God chose to reveal himself again in three persons, namely Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this he does for mostly for the, the purpose of the redemption of mankind. God is a spirit, and since a spirit cannot die, and since blood is needed for the redemption of man who have sinned against God, if God is going to redeem us, then how is he going to do it? He is a spirit, and only God is perfect. We need a perfect sacrifice. So how is God going to do this? God clothed his word with flesh. The word became flesh, Emmanuel. God with us in human flesh. God speak about the incarnation. So God wrote his word in flesh. His prerogative to do what he pleases as Angel Gabriel said, nothing is impossible with God. It's funny that you'll hear a lot of people quote that scripture and then they said, well, God can't do this. God cannot do that. Contradicting yourself. So God became man. Why? In order that he could die, meaning limited himself in some way, allowed himself to be tempted, as we are, so that we could sympathize with fallen men in this present uh, experience that we are experiencing here. Three persons in, united in one. Radical teaching, because God is a radical God. It is given to us to know the things that pertain unto the children of men, and the things that are hidden belongs unto God. So here, if we read a text, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, if we believe that scripture, truly believe it, why then would we say that there is something that God cannot do? If there's a God that creates everything in time, Speak about time, space, and matter. Everything that we see around us. And then we are forced to get everything in motion. And then what is created or was created is now held together in perfect harmony. That the moon is not running into the sun. The sun is not running into Jupiter. Everything keep their course. If we believe that there's a God that is in control of all of these things. How can we then say God cannot do this? God cannot do that. Again, the angel said, God, angel Gabriel, nothing is impossible. Nothing shall be impossible with God. God do what he pleases. Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Deuteronomy 4, 39. How many lords are there? One. That's what we are reading here. As I said, three persons, one divine being. It's one God who chooses to reveal himself in three different persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not three lords, not three gods. One Lord, one God. Deuteronomy 4, verse 35. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, listen, who is he? Who is the Lord? He is God. There is none else beside him. Who is the Lord? He is God. I want you to, to, to remember that, to hear that, to get it in your spirit. Who is the Lord? He is God. Whoever the Lord is, let me <laughs> just break it down. Whoever the Lord is, he is God. God is the Lord and the Lord is God. Whoever God is, he is the Lord, and whoever the Lord is, he is God. No, know that the Lord, he is God. There is none beside him. Deuteronomy 4 verse 39. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart, listen, that the Lord, he is God. Who is the Lord? 
He is God. Who is the Lord? He is God. In heaven above and in the earth beneath, there is none else. Psalm 100, verse 1 through 3. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. Know he that the Lord is God. Isaiah 43 verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God. Who is the Lord? Thy God. I am the Lord thy God. God is the Lord. The Lord is God. The Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Also, now we have another introduction of titles. The Lord is God, and God is the Lord. The Lord is the Savior, and God is the Savior. For I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for ransom, Ethiopia, and Deden for thee. So the Lord is plainly, clearly teaching scripture over and over. I could give you so many of the scripture that the Lord is God and God is the Lord. Now we see that the Lord is also the Savior. God is also the Savior. Is there another Savior apart from God? The answer is no. Let's read Isaiah 43 to 11 through 12. I even I am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. So again, the Lord is God. God is the Lord. God is the Savior. The Savior is the Lord. Beside God, beside the Lord, there is no Savior. I know I'm repeating. I'm repeating because I want you to hear. I want you to get it in your spirit. I don't want you to ever have any doubt about this topic again. That's why I'm giving you scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. May God grant you faith to believe. Isaiah 43, 11 through 12. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there's no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, I have showed when there was no stranger, strange God among you. Therefore, he are my witnesses, say the Lord, that I am God. You are my witnesses, say the Lord, that I am God. The Lord is God. God is the Lord. God is the Savior. The Lord is the Savior. So what do we find in the New Testament concerning this Lord? Titus 1 verse 4. To Titus, my own son, after the common fate, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hold on a minute. Something is wrong. There's a mistake here, it seems. We read how many, how many scriptures in the Old Testament that say that God is the Lord and the Lord is the Savior. There's no other Savior but God. There's no other Savior but the Lord. Now, how is it that Paul is writing to Titus and saying that, you know, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and not just from God the Father, and, so he's adding something or someone else, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So now the title Lord is given to Jesus and Savior is given to Jesus. The Old Testament said there's no other Savior but God. There is no other Lord but God. The Lord, he is God. Now Paul said Jesus Christ is not only Lord, but he is Savior. What's going on? What do we have here? Why is it Christian believe Jesus Christ is God? Maybe something like this we read that give us a clue that Jesus Christ is more than a man. 2 Peter 3.18 but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Wonder what is coming next. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So 
Jesus is called Lord and Savior? Yahweh in the Old Testament said, beside me there's no Lord and there's no Savior? How could, how could these people, Paul and Peter, how could they be referring to Jesus as both Lord and Savior? Is the Bible, is it, did, did, did they not know or read, are they heretic? Is it a different spirit that, uh, that, that, that is motivating these men from who wrote the Old Testament? So if Jesus Christ is not God, it couldn't be the same Holy Spirit of God that is inspiring these men. But the scriptures, the Bible tells us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Inspired by the same spirit. So how is it if Jesus Christ is not God, if he is not Lord, if he is not Savior, how is it that? These writings are in the New Testament. Show me where Jesus Christ said he's God. Or all of these things we hear that, you know, we no. Not three gods, not three lords, one God. I and the Father are one, Jesus said. There are three that bear witness in heaven, and these three are one. These three are one. Can you imagine going on a maths test and put and putting that on your maths test? You see, that's not an earthly. Uh, a principle that's a heavenly principle. Uh, these three are one. You know how to say flunk. That's what you the, your teacher would do. You'd be flunked out of school. You get an F or something, or maybe even low grade. They are three that bear, bear witness in heaven, and these three are one. I and my Father are one. One Lord, one God, one faith, one baptism. The Old Testament tells us clearly that Yahweh is the only Lord and Savior. He is the only God, the only Lord. The only Savior. Why do Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God? Because all of the attributes that's given to Yahweh in the Old Testament is ascribed to Jesus Christ. It would be madness for us not to believe Jesus Christ is God. After all the abundance of evidence by the Holy Spirit who inspired all scripture. Not by our clever mind. Not leaning on our... If we should go by just understanding, the natural man understand not the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. If we should just go by what we read and, and just go by that understanding, all of us would doubt the Bible. But the Scripture tells us that that's not how God operates. He gave to those who are his the ability to understand through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That the natural man, that's why it said the natural man cannot understand the things of God. Their foolishness, I and the Father are one, doesn't make sense to a natural man. Their tree that bear witness in heaven and this tree are one does not make sense to a natural man. I went to school. I went to college, I went to university, that's nonsense. You cannot receive that in your spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God to help you to digest that truth. And remember, only the truth can set you free. So if you lean on your own understanding, you will walk in darkness, blindness, and be ignorant always of the things of God. The things of God is not given through education. They come through revelation. No amount of university, college, or wherever you go, Bible school, can give you the truth of God's word. Only Jesus said it this way. It is expedient, important, vital that I go away. Because if I don't go, he, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit will not come. When he comes, is a person, he. He will guide you into all truth. He will bring back things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have told you. 
Often we read in the scripture and it said that the disciples remember that Jesus said this. And they, rem they remember what Jesus said. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is now bringing them back, bring it back to their memory. He told them, Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem. I must be killed. And at the third day, raise again, rise again to life. Scripture tells us that when Jesus was crucified, the disciples did not know he was going to die. What? Jesus said that over and over to you guys. How do you mean he, you did not know he was going to die? I must go to Jerusalem. I'll be crucified and killed and come to life again on the, on the third day. But they did not know. How did they not know? The scripture tells us because God hid it from them. So Jesus told it to them and immediately God hid it from them. Because had they known, their action might have been different. So God told, uh, Jesus told them, but it was hidden. He, will, he remove it from their memory. But the, the Bible said when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit bring back all that Jesus said. And now they understood things that they could not understand before. We need the Holy Spirit in order to translate heaven's message to our heart. That we can understand the things of God. Because the things of heaven does not correlate often with the things of earth. So if you're living on a horizontal plane, you need a vertical connection. His name is Jesus Christ. He's Jacob's ladder. So it's very hard for you to understand where we speak about the Trinity and speak about Jesus being God, the Lord, and Savior if you do not know or have the translator from heaven living in your heart. The Holy Spirit. Who is the Lord? He is God. Hear what Paul, a Jewish disciple who was steeped in Jewish laws and know the Torah and the Tanakh inside out. The Torah being the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The Tanakh is, from, uh, is all the, the, the writings and the prophets up to Malachi. So Paul boasts about his stu being a student of Gamaliel, one of the greatest Jewish teachers. He was uh, zealous for the Jewish writings. But he met Jesus. And Paul would say in Romans chapter 10, My desire <coughs> for my brethren, the Jew, is that they be saved. Because they have in a form of godliness, but they die in the power thereof. Because they're going about trying to what? Obtain righteousness by basically Paul said by their own works. It doesn't work like that. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in the sight of God. So here is what Paul, a Jewish disciple, who boasts about his his ability to translate Torah and Tanakh teaching and have a full understanding because he was grow, brought up under one of the greatest Jewish rabbi ever. Hear what he said about, I quote this often, so this shouldn't be strange to you if you listen to the show often. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But unto us there is but one God, the Father, oh, one God the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. Then Paul went on, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. What on earth just happened? Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. That's the foundation that Paul would grow upon. That's something that he, like the milk that he would drink every morning as a babe, growing up into a spiritual uh, giant. So what he just did, what's wrong with Paul? What's going on? For... Scripture tells us there's a, that the Lord is God. Over and over we read before that the Lord is God. God is the Lord. Now Paul said, unto us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. And we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. So now Paul is separating those. Know therefore this day, understand it in thine heart that the Lord is God. Know therefore this day, understand it in thine heart that the Lord, he is God. Deuteronomy 4.39. Now Paul's saying, he like he's cutting that God and Lord apart and ascribing 
divinity to both. <laughs> because that's exactly what Paul is doing. Paul is not trying to tell you that the God the Father is God, but he's not Lord, and Jesus Christ is Lord, but he's not God. He's trying to show us the distinction in God. There. That's what Paul is basically doing. There's one God who is a Father and one Lord. So if, if, if God is... If we say that Jesus Christ is not God, we have to honestly, if you're intellectually honest, you must conclude that God is not Lord, which would be ridiculous. Paul said God, one God is a father, and the one Lord, which is from the Shema, is not God the Father, is Jesus Christ. How many Lords are there? The scripture tells us. There's only one Lord, Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echad. The Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Paul here is quoting the Shema in light of the New Testament scripture and said the one Lord of the Shema is Jesus Christ. We cannot go beyond scripture. We teach as the word of God has revealed. We believe Jesus Christ is God on the basis of overwhelming evidence in Scripture. Overwhelming evidence. So, do we believe in three gods? No. Now, please don't act, please don't make up stories and tell us what we believe. And, and, you know, you guys believe in three gods, even though we say we don't. It is, it is so disrespectful for you to be telling us what we believe, even though we tell you we don't believe that, and then asking us to explain what we don't believe. We're praying that God will give you grace to believe the truth. Because it doesn't matter what man said, if the Holy Spirit does not work on your heart, you cannot come to faith. My desire is that you come to the knowledge of saving grace through Jesus Christ by giving a listening here to his word and let faith develop because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is Talking Jesus. God bless you.